Hey everyone, good morning. It is Monday morning. I'm trying something new here. It's like being in the studio. <laughs> I, it's Monday morning, February 1st. Good morning, thanks for joining me. And uh, it is the beginning of a new week. It is the beginning of a new day, of course. And a new month. Can you believe that we are now looking at February? So I'm excited that you're here with me this morning and that you could start your day and your week with me. And um, it is, if you're in the Northeast, uh, I know many of you watch this later, but, uh, and, and may live in other states, but if you're in the Northeast, uh, there is a major snowstorm. So I want to thank, I see uh, Michelle got up early and joined me here on Zoom. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Oh, I see we have some other people. So yeah, so I'd love to um, have you join me on Zoom. The information is on the Mojo Facebook page. And uh, what's nice about having you here on Zoom is we can talk, um, but you can always watch this too through the Facebook group, either live at, at 7.30 on Monday mornings, or you can uh, catch the uh, replay when I upload it to my YouTube channel and share it sometime during the week on Facebook. So I am excited to have you here. Um, I love this opportunity for us to get started and to kind of jumpstart our week and for, um, for me to be able to just share anything that might inspire you and help you, you know, to create a path towards the goals that you have and, and really to see bigger results in your life. And we started the year talking about your goals, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about your goals, your intentions, uh, we, we took a look at some of the habits that you need to have and the questions you might need to ask yourself in that reflection time. Um, and today I want to talk about people. And I'd like to talk or ask you to think about who is helping you get to your next level. So if you're going to take notes this morning, that's a great question to write down. Who is going to, who is going to help me get to my next level? And I, I know given the choice, no one wants to fail, right? Everyone wants to succeed. And of course we don't wanna struggle either. Um, yet we sometimes fail to uh, take opportunities that we could uh, implement in our lives that can help us get where we need to be faster and easier. And so this morning I wanna talk about some key people that you may need to have in your world and the difference between all those groups of people. Um, but I think that when we um, tell ourselves that working hard is the only answer, is the only way to go, um, we're, really, we're really cutting ourselves off from strategic options. And so again, there are key people that you can have in your inner circle that can help you see things from another perspective. And that is really key. Right, because it's the only vantage point we have is our own. It's the only information that we have is our own. Are, are we really looking at it from every possible angle? Are we really, um, is it possible that we're able to implement all of the different strategies because we're limited to only what, what we know or what we've experienced? So who's in your corner? Because another part of this is, is just having support is having someone who um, can really you know, coach you and cheer, be your cheerleader at the same time, someone who can point something out to you uh, and someone who can just help you feel supported, right? So that's an important concept too. So all successful high achievers have a group of people usually, not just one, in their inner circle that they can rely on for coaching, consulting, mentorship, direction, and um, I wanted to kind of break it, at, break it down, maybe unpack this for you a little bit. Sometimes I, um, I've had people ask me a lot of questions about well, what is coaching or what's the difference between coaching and consulting? Um, and uh, we're gonna talk about that today. What, what is the difference between a coach? What is the difference between a mentor or consultant? And what's the difference between a trainer? Uh, and you may have all these people in, you know, in your um, success plan, right? But they're all going to, um, be in a different role and have a different capacity for you. And you're gonna get a different experience too based on who you're working with. Um, so uh, when we look at how we can move forward and really break through the next level, it's not gonna be alone. And it's not gonna be by doing the same things that you've been doing that got you there. 
right? And uh, I've talked about this in other Mojo sessions. It requires a breakthrough. And in order for you to have a breakthrough, uh, it's gonna require you to do things not only differently, but with more purpose. And so um, that is really the opportunity that you give yourself when you work with other people, when you give yourself the opportunity to take in their education, their experiences, there are trials and errors sometimes too, right? Their, their failures, their success stories. Um, and I have you know, a group of people that I, that I coach, I have a group of people that I mentor. Uh, sometimes I coach and mentor in the same relationship. I just show up a little differently. Um, but when I show up as a mentor, you know, one of my goals is to really help that person um, you know, to learn from some of my mistakes and to learn from some of the things that I did that really proved to have great results. So if you ask anyone who's achieved anything worthwhile, they'll tell you that somewhere along the way, there was someone who really gave them the support, the guidance, the tools, the education. Um, they inspired them, they motivated them, they encouraged them and lifted them up towards their success. And all of these people um, in some way, shape or form can help you with your accountability, some more direct than others. We'll talk about that too. Um, and honestly, I think the smartest um, entrepreneurs or the smartest individuals understand that it is really about who you surround yourself with, right? Because I believe that it's people that push other people forward or people promote other people. So I'm excited to break this down for you. So let's get into that. Um, and here's another question I want you to write down too, along the same, this, this context. I want you to ask yourself if you're surrounding yourself with enough of the right people. Are you surrounding yourself with enough of the right people? And who is pushing you? Because we need people to push us past our own limitations. And we need people who can expand our expectations and who can really not just encourage us, right? Like I, I know that I, I'm looked at a lot of times as someone who's motivating or inspiring and I'm very blessed to hear that, thank you. But my, my goal is to do more than that for you, right? I don't just wanna inspire you and motivate you, I wanna push you. I wanna give you tools, I wanna equip you to really take an assessment of where you are and where you want to be. And it's the gap in between that we want to work with, right? So that's also something I wanted to make sure. And you can write that in your notes too. What is my gap, right? Taking a look at where you are right now versus where you want to be and assessing how you're going to bridge that gap. Okay. So all of this is because we're not the masters of our own life. I mean, we're in control of our choices. Our choices make our, you know, shape our reality. But sometimes it takes a little humil humility to accept the fact that we need help, to accept the fact that maybe we need someone else to help us figure it out or give us some more information to look at it from a different vantage point. Um, and especially in the professional world, right, where there's so many um, options and there's so many uh, talented people in, in our midst that if we're not connecting with them and we're not asking these questions, we could be missing out on some, something that is truly powerful. So the first thing I wanna do uh, right now is, is kind of break down this concept of coaching, mentoring, <clears throat> training. Um, and I'm gonna post a diagram that I found that I like here. Um, and I'm gonna post it on the Facebook page just as a backup to the conversation. Um, so let's start out with a trainer. Um, we've all had experiences with training, right? And um, it started in school, right? It started in elementary school. It went all the way up through, you know, high school, secondary education and college perhaps. And so a trainer is someone who is um, presenting on a subject and they're offering direct guidance based on that context, right? They're, they're breaking it down sometimes very specific on how to. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of times the trainer is focused on that uh, one 
area of expertise, right? Like even in high school, you had the math teacher. And now as you know, we've moved on into looking at professional and personal development, there are trainers who really have that signature talk or they focus on one particular topic. Um, their, their presentation is highly structured. So you come into the training and the trainer has it mapped out um, and they're not usually one-on-one, -on -one, right? Now, sometimes you can have a trainer for, um, let's say, you know, your um, physical health, right? You may have a, a fitness trainer. And so that could be one-on-one. -on -one. But again, you're coming in, they have a plan. They're teaching you and they're going to hold you accountable to the structure that they have planned out. Um, and a lot of times these trainers are coming from their own past experiences um, and they're providing you with some resources and some tools. But here's the thing, usually with trainers, right? Um, and I'm gonna have you move that personal trainer out of the picture for a minute. Um, but let's just say, you know, training in a business setting or some other setting, um, they're not usually there to follow up with you. They're not usually going to hold you accountable once you leave the class, once you leave the session, right? So the trainer is gonna provide you with information, maybe some strategies, some tools, some how-tos, but then it's up to you to implement it. Now, even with the personal trainer, so you go back, let's say week after week, and you're working with your trainer, but you cannot pay the trainer to do your setups for you, right? So there's still the same concept there. There's only so much accountability that they can provide you because you have to do the work, okay? So that's a trainer. Now, a mentor is someone who is um, inspired to help people, just like a trainer is, right? The, the mentor is really inspired to help people. Uh, they are aware because you, you've shared with them what it is that you want to accomplish. Uh, they can answer very direct questions, right? You can come to them uh, with, how do I do this? Or how do I get to the next level? Um, they can provide you with information and resources. They too are usually basing that on past experiences. Um, and mentors are usually really inspired or motivated to help you get where you are it, faster and easier than they did. Like that, that motivates a mentor because they, they are really inspired to give you this clearer path than what they had, right? Because they want to, and a lot of times mentors will, sh will share stories with you of their experiences, right? So they're working through that lens and um, uh, they can be somewhat structured too. Like sometimes in a mentorship um, relationship, they may have an agenda. Like if you're in a mastermind group um, and if you have questions about masterminds, just let me know but um, they usually do have some plan based on whatever it is that you've come to them for, okay? Now, the trainer, I'm just gonna go back to the trainer. Not that the trainer is not passionate about what they do, but especially if they're in a large setting, like a large training, um, they don't have the opportunity to really connect with you one-on-one. -on -one. So when the training is over, and as I said, there isn't that high level of accountability after the training is over, um, is it is it fair to say the trainer can go off to the next op, you know training opportunity and may not have any concept of who is in the room and and where you're headed or what's the opportunity right now a mentor may have a little bit more uh, connection to you and may want to have this accountability with you but depending on who you're working with as a mentor who's going to you know basically shine the flashlight and show you the path. Um, they may not be equipped to really know how to hold you accountable at a high level either, you know, because they, it depends on their background and the, on their skill set and their training, right? So, so that's another thing to consider. A lot of times mentors show up as peers, right, within your own work community or industry or, you know, who has experience in whatever it is that you're looking to accomplish. Um, so they, uh, they, they have a lot of, you know, resources for you, but they may not be able to hold you accountable. So let's talk about a coach, right? Now, my point to this is that all three of these people, a trainer, a mentor, or a coach are valuable, um, to your success, right? So it's not that I'm asking you to choose one over the other. I just want to help you understand 
and identify the differences, right? So that you can clearly know what to expect. So a coach is someone who has training usually um, and preferably uh, has, you know, coaching training and certifications that that's something I would look at. Um, and the reason why, you know, I have, I have many. And the reason why is because that coach has really made a, a, a dedicated effort to crafting um, or, or making this their craft, right? And who um, has gone on to really take the time to understand behavior, to understand the coaching principles, to understand how to be a really effective coach uh, and a competent coach, right? Because um, for instance, I am a member of the International Coach Federation. I've been a member for 10 years and it's a global organization. It's kind of like the governing body of coaching. And um, you might want to look for a coach who's ICF, um, either ICF accredited or at least a member of the ICF. So I, I abide by the ICF code of God, the code of ethics, excuse me. And so it just puts me, you know, I've made a commitment to be on this higher level of, of professional behavior. But not all coaches are certified. And, and you could work with a fantastic, effective coach who may not be certified because they're just, they're highly skilled. Um, so it just, it depends on what your goals are, but a coach is possibly working with you one-on-one, -on -one, could be working with you in a group. I like to think of Monday Morning Mojo as a group coaching session, right? Um, but they are focused on you and what you need most. Um, so even though, so I show up here as a, as a coach, but kind of as a trainer more because I have an agenda every week. If you were working with me as a coach individually, I wouldn't come in with an agenda. I would not come in and say, okay, so today we're going to talk about this. As a coach, what we do is we, we meet with a client and we assess what the client is looking to accomplish, right? So you share with your coach what your goals are. You share with your, co with your coach uh, what challenges maybe you've been facing and getting there, uh, what, what the opportunities might be. Uh, what, what you might be challenged by. So we can have this assessment and then know like where we're going to zero in. But every week or every time you meet with your coach, the coach is probably going to start out with, so tell me what the most important thing is we can talk about today. So the coach is always going to be interested in knowing that from you. It is not where they're going to have a, a planned agenda. Um, they are going to ask a lot of questions. The most effective coaches are speaking in the form of a question 95% of the time. And if I'm going to be direct, if I'm going to step out of coach mode, maybe into mentor or trainer mode, I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to ask you if it's okay. I'm going to say, hey, can I be a little direct right now? Would it be all right if I just helped you with this and maybe gave you something to consider? But even then, if you could, if you heard what I just said, I'm going to say, can I give you something to consider? Because a coach is not, a coach remains very objective. A coach is not going to put their thoughts on you. A coach is not going to really tell you what to do. That's more of a consultant, right? We hire a consultant who can assess and give us direction, give us a plan and tell us what we need to do. A coach is really going to help you explore your options. And a coach is going to help you really self-discover what needs to be done. The most effective coaches, we believe that you have the answers, that you just are struggling with connecting with them. And also as a coach, we may help you work through some of the mindset issues, depending on the type of coach you work with and their skill set. I help my clients work through a lot of the mindset issues and the behavior issues that can get in their way of success, right? Because you can have the best laid out plans, the most strategic options, and it looks super clear, but you keep hitting a brick wall. And that could be because of your mindset or the behaviors that you're either engaging in or not engaging in, right? A lot of things we've talked about here on Mojo. So um, a coach is always going to um, also move you forward. A coach is forward, is, is future. Um, sorry, I got tongue tied on that. A coach is always looking towards the future and helping you move towards the future. So it's very action-based right? Where being in training is a lot of education, you're taking notes, you're listening, then you have to figure out what to do with all that information, right? Because you probably have very smart notebooks all over the place, but it's about applying them, applying the information. Um, and so similar with a mentor, 
a coach is going to provide you with that perspective and they're going to ask you, okay, so what is the action plan? And they're going to help you come up with the action plan. And then the next time you meet with the coach, it's about, okay, let's talk about what you accomplished. And, and it's always about moving you forward. Moving you forward. So, um, and then a, a consultant is someone who you bring in, uh, who again has expertise, knowledge, skills, um, experience in a particular area that you're looking to get information about, uh, maybe to implement, to move forward on, maybe the, it's, it's to troubleshoot something. Uh, it's, it's usually, you know, very specific. And so the consultant is coming in, they are more than likely assessing the situation, talking to a lot of people, getting, you know, um, as much uh, uh, detail as possible about where you are and where you wanna be. So it's the same gap analysis. Uh, and the, the difference between the coach and the consultant is the consultant is basically gonna give you the plan. They're gonna say, okay, so here's where you are and I know this is where you wanna be. And I, I've spent time assessing everything from systems to models to people. And here is what I think you need to do. And they present you with the plan. That's consulting, right? Uh, versus the coach, who's going to say something like, well, what do you think is the best option right now? And they're going to, you know, through their questions, teach you basically program you to really expand your thinking and ask those questions so that you can self-discover and get the information or the answer for yourself. So I wanted to share all this with you because I think that, um, you know, in this year, we started out talking about, and, and I know that the majority of us want this year to be different. And we want to accomplish, you know, really big things and, and it's exciting. And yet we have to realize that we can't do the same things, right? That got us here. If you're looking for extraordinary results, it, it stands to reason we have to do something different. And so for, I've had some people, you know, ask me these questions. I even had someone message me on the Mojo group not that long ago, um, asking, you know, could you explain more about coaching in one of the Mojo sessions? And so I didn't want it to just be about coaching because I think that you can work with a fantastic coach um, and you should also be considering key areas of your life where you might need that kind of support, right? It could be financial, it could be career and business, it could be fitness, um, it could be on wealth building and, and, and you want different coaches or consultants or trainers in all those areas. And it's not just about the coaching. Like I said, there's value in going and getting training, right? There are, there are amazing speakers and, um, and I often am in that mode myself uh, where you can get information to apply to your strategic plan. Um, there are great consultants and coaches and everyone has a different role and it depends on what you're looking to accomplish. And, and the most successful people have a team like that in their, in their world right? It's not about just one person. You want to diversify the options, the, the vantage points, the information, right? You want to take it in from multiple sources. Um, so I, I would say I've, I've referred to the Wheel of Life many times. It's available to you through the Mojo page on, in the files. Um, and those are the key areas of your life that I would take time if you haven't done that. Um, and I honestly would make a habit of doing that a few times a year. Um, but assess where you are in each of those areas and what you would need to do to move the needle up. Because what you're going to do is assess how full you basically feel in each area. Um, so if you want to move that, that if you want to get that, you know, to the next level, what is it that you need to do? What is the one thing and who can help you? Um, so the other thing that I want to mention too, that can come in the form of um, training, maybe even mentoring is that the fact that we have so many um, great thought leaders available to us through podcasts, uh, through things like this, books. So that's another question I would ask myself. What am I reading? Who am I listening to, right? So it's not just the people in our inner circle that we have direct contact with, but it could be you know, um, how we're making um, ourselves really connect with all this information and resources. But in order to do that, and in order for it to really be effective 
I think it's important that you first identify what are my goals? Who do I need to become in order to get there, right? What skill sets do I need to develop more of? What, what might I have to work on, right? Do I need a consultant? Do I need a coach? Do I need a mentor, a trainer? And so as you get clear about that, then you can make really great choices about the podcasts you're going to listen to, the books you're going to read. Because look, I, I used to say, this is, this is going to date me now. I used to say to people all the time, look, you can walk into the library. I don't, if any of you need to know what a library is, text me, I'll tell you. Or into Barnes and Nobles, right? This is how old I am. And you could go to the self-help section and there's no shortage of books on any topic, right? Now, all those books doesn't make every person who wrote it the expert or the right person for you. Like you want to really use discernment and choose the people that you wanna learn from because they have proven results. So I think that that's important too. And then the last thing I'll say about all of this is your time, right? I'm gonna talk a lot about time because in order to achieve great results, you have to be purposeful about how you use your time. We all have 24 hours in a day, right? And yet, why is it that some of us achieve so much more than others? I'm sure you've all had the experience of looking at someone who is successful in their field, whether it's in career and business mm -hmm. or whether it's you know sports or entertainment or whatever, right? And you look at that person and you're like, I don't know how they did it. Wow. Well, you know, it's because they probably did a lot of things that uh, no one else wanted to do, quite frankly. And you're not seeing that. You're just seeing the end result of it, right? So I, I think that, you know, all of those people, whoever you want to put in that category of being highly successful, they have the same 24 hours in a day as you do. Right. So we might all, you know, have a, an hour or more or less of sleep. But at the end of the day, we have the same amount of time to do whatever it is that we want to do. What makes some people more effective and successful than others? It's because they make better choices about how to use their time. And so that's important, too. So it's really about identifying the most important things and making time for that first. Right. And blocking that time. So. We put a lot into this half hour. I don't know what time it is if I'm running over. No, I'm right on time. But I usually want to give you guys a sec to ask if you have any questions or thoughts. Um, and I see there might be a couple of things in the chat. Let me just check that out. Jill, you had some questions about coaching. I'm telling, I'm trying right. To yeah, I, I myself has been trained years ago as a professional counselor, very specifically a vocational rehab counselor. And just then the mentoring and coaching became a thing. And I was always curious because, you know, coaching somebody is a little different than a counselor would be, I, in my mind. It's so I just thought very different. maybe how you can you, address how that. You define, how would you define um, counseling? Um, if I looked at all that you said with regard to coaching, the the presumption is how the person would come to to this to the counselor. I mean, to me, the qualifier is who is the person, and why did they step into that arena to want mm -hmm. to seek a counselor? Um, yeah, because that, that to me is the, is how you say, gee, that person needs a different level of intervention, if you will. Yeah, um, different than say, gee, I'm looking for a new career. Maybe I should go talk to somebody. That's yeah. very different. It and, is. Again, in my mind. Yeah, no, it is. And I think that um, all, all of us, depending on who we're getting in front of, we're motivated for some type of change or answer, right? And so um, coaching, uh, mentoring, training, consulting is all based on the premise that we're helping whoever is in front of us change in some way, right? Uh, but I think with, with counseling, um, that person is coming to the counselor for really clear direction. Unless they're being referred by their mother and their mother thinks they need counseling. <laughs> I understand that, yeah. But, you know, they're coming to the council because they need help, right? They need clear right. direction. Right. Uh, they, they um, I don't want anyone to mistake this, but I'm just going to say it very direct. They're, they need to be told or they desire to be told what they should do. You know, they, and through the process of counseling, 
you know, I'm sure that you're breaking down, you know, whatever the situation is, or maybe how they even got there in some sense, right? But right. It, it's to understand it. And it's to, in some cases, reconcile with it, then in order to move forward. In contrast to a coach, so when you come to a coach, you may not have all the answers, but you know where you want to go and you're ready to move forward, right? You're ready for right. the change and you're ready for that opportunity to grow. Um, so I am not, when I'm in, as a coach, um, in, in most of the of like professional coaching or even life coaching, I'm really helping that client move forward. Um, I do work with some people on uh, releasing negative emotions or emotional trauma. That's a little different. We have to go back right. to the problem. But in most cases, um, it's someone who's coming to the coach who's like, okay, I'm ready to move forward. I need action based, you know, I need, I need to create actions in my life. And that coach is going to hold them accountable so that they see transformation or change. Any other thoughts or questions? Yeah. Hi, Anna. Hi, good morning. Um, yeah, in my previous career or my, my career that I've been in, another big player was a sponsor too, which is someone who's going to advocate for you when you're not sitting in the room, right? So let's say senior management's meeting to hand out a project or something like that. You want somebody sitting in that room that's going to say, hey, Anna's a great person for that, et cetera, et cetera. And how does that kind of play into all this? Yeah, sponsors, that's a huge, that's, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say sponsors were really big in that environment. It kind of goes beyond mentoring. It's, it's much less of a, for, it's a less formal relationship, but I think a really important one too. Yeah. So um, that sounds pretty unique. Was that too unique to your company? Um, maybe the industry that I was in. Oh, the industry. Okay. So I was, I was in finance and and yeah, I, it was something that was really important. Um, like I said, it wasn't a formal relationship where you're actually saying, I'm your mentor, I'm your mentee, but it's someone that you confide in and trust and vice versa. It's a, it's a mutual, mutually beneficial relationship, but. No, that's, that's really interesting. I would say um, that, well, it, the, the person, the sponsor, do they also work with the individual to mentor them. And so that was just taking it a step further and saying, okay, so based on what I know about this person, based on the relationship, based on, you know, what I've been able to, to teach them and also assess in terms of their skill set or aptitude or capacity, mm -hmm. I, I really, you know, want to advocate for them, it sounds like, and say, you know, this is the, next. so that's, um, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's probably something that has the potential to show up, you know, in certain, work environments in certain corporate environments but um you know that's that's a little different that i haven't heard that before in that in that context i think that's yeah. great but could it be because you were talking financially that there's a fiduciary relationship and a lot of legalese around how to s support i mean everyone looks at money in a whole different way especially in that industry i wonder if that didn't play a part in in terms of how they supported you or the relationship well, I think it's like, for example, I had a girl that reported to me, worked for me, great, excellent worker, big thinker, and just really great. So I wasn't her mentor. I was actually her, I wasn't even her direct report. I was two levels above her, but I met with her a lot and I talked to her a lot. She liked to bounce things off me and just have like conversations on what if, what about, et cetera. Can you give me feedback type thing? So it definitely was an informal relationship. But because I got to know her so well, I would walk into a, a meeting and let's say they were trying to find somebody to lead a, a, a work group or something. I'd say, hey, Natalia was great because X, Y, and Z, I've seen her do this. So it, it was more just, like I said, someone who's got your back, who's yeah. willing to promote you when you're not there type sure. thing. Well, so here's what I'll say. Like, I'm not quite sure if this was a structured program in your company or just something that was encouraged. Yeah, right? it was encouraged. It was yeah. encouraged. Okay. Yeah. So, and here's the thing, right? That's the other really, I think, valuable uh, piece of this conversation and, and a really powerful outcome that could come 
from expanding your world. So whether you're a solopreneur, right? Yeah. Uh, all working on your own in your business or you have a team or you're working in a company, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's small or large, um, at the end of the day, when we allow ourselves to expand our, our uh, network, when we allow ourselves to learn and, and be mentored and coached by other people, I too, as I work with people, right? And I get to know you. So whether it's within my role at Keller Williams, um, or even outside, you know, when I'm, when I have the opportunity to, to get into coaching or consulting or mentorship relationships with other people, mm -hmm. because I'm working with you and I learn so much about you and I get to see where your talent is, you know, if, if I, if I feel confident that I can bet on you, I'll advocate for you too, yeah. you know, and I've opened doors for people and connected people to opportunity or other people. And yep. so I can't promise you that that's going to happen depending on who's in your circle. But if you make the right choices, I guarantee you probably will. Because yep. I, I know successful people are always looking, um, growth-minded people, I should say, are always looking to bring someone up with them, right? Okay. True leaders, because all of, the, all of these groups of people I've described today have leadership skills, right? Or they wouldn't be providing you with all these resources. Um, the, they're motivated to contribute and, and support people. So I think true leaders, one of the main uh, characteristics of an effective leader is the fact that they are not only motivated to, but can, can develop other leaders, right? Mm -hmm. And develop other people. So that is really another, and I'm really glad you brought this up, Michelle, because it, it, it really is you know, one of the opportunities that will show up as you connect with more people that can guide you and teach you and mentor and coach you, you mm -hmm. know, they're going to get to experience uh, what you're capable of and, and they may be motivated to advocate for you. And yeah. so they, you may find that this sponsorship happens organically. Yep. Um, and so that was a great point to make. Thank you. Yeah, I love that topic. And I think what would be really valuable if you can look at a workplace setting, a leader who's newly appointed, who needs a coach, because you see so many, I hear so much about these toxic workplaces where in your place, they were encouraging, caring, nurturing, supporting. You know how many people are doing just the opposite to claw them to the top because they think that to step on people? Yeah. Oh, yep. so yeah. That and would I, be I'll just, I'm going to close on this because I know we're running all over. But, um, you know, it, that's another reason why I wanted to talk about this topic. I think it, it's really important uh, as part of your strategic planning to get to the next level. But, you know, I, I'm just going <laughs> to plug Keller Williams for a minute. In our environment, um, we have access to all the people I described on this Mojo session on this call and it, at any given moment. There are trainers and there are mentors and coaches. And it's such a part, it's, it's just woven into our fabric. Um, and because I've, I've really, you know, been driving in, in this industry and, and working as a coach for more than a decade now, um, I sometimes, you know, have to be reminded that this is, this is a conversation to have with most people uh, because it's not so readily available in your environment. You have to seek it out. It's, it's available to you. You just have to make, you know, decisions about what you need and find those people. Um, so again, if anyone has any additional thoughts or questions, feel free to reach out to me, put them on the Facebook page. I trust that you got value out of this conversation and I'm going to encourage and, and uh, invite you to really think about who you need to uh, you know, include in your strategic planning, who you need to invite into your world. Do you need to hire a coach? Do you need some more mentors? Uh, what books should you be reading? What podcasts should you be listening to that line up with your goals and the things that you need to do to get there. So thanks again for being here, you guys. Have an awesome week and I'll see you again next Monday. Thank thanks, you. Anna. All right, take care. Enjoy. Have a good day.